you've definitely gotten really comfortable over all these years with your particular way of doing things. Um, but I want to kind of step back a little bit further um, and, and kind of get an idea of where it all comes from, you know. Um, I'd, I'd say that you're probably known for, for being a contrarian thinker. Would you agree with that? Uh, if, yeah, probably. I think people, I mean, it's funny because, like, I don't think my ideas are contrarian at all, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But, yeah. right. but against our, let's call it against our industry, yes. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people have thoughts from time to time where there's sort of a prevailing wisdom and they think, well, that doesn't seem right. But then I think a lot of people don't, they, they bottle up inside or they don't act upon it. They don't give themselves the permission and the confidence to go ahead and say, like, I don't think it should be that way. It should be this other way and to, to go ahead with it. Um, and I think that that's something, you know, if you, even if you go back and look at the 37 signals, which is the, the former name site. of the company, yeah. 37signals.com slash manifesto. Yep. There's all these things about, uh, you know, we're small on purpose and um, all these things that are against the prevailing wisdom, that we purposely are not full service. Right. Things like that. And even, by the way, even that site itself mm -hmm. was, that's probably actually, that site is the most contrarian thing we've ever done. Yeah. We're a web design company. There wasn't a piece of work on that site. It was black and white. It was all text. 37 ideas is what that was. And if you think about back then, that was 99, web design firms even today. like 1999, a, for those who can't remember. <laughs> right, 1999. The, the, it was a previous different century. Different century. Um, uh, but even today, it's all the same. Like Basically, agency sites are portfolio sites for the most part, which is like, here's our shining work, and here's the work we've been doing. Here's yeah. pictures of it, and like I get that. We didn't have a single picture of any work that we'd done yeah. on that site. And the whole idea was that Everyone's work pretty much looks the same. If it's good, it's like roughly the same, right? Yeah. But what sets companies apart and people apart, I think, are the ideas that they have. And most companies don't think the way we thought we thought. And so we want to put our ideas out there to make us appear different and to, to attract the kind of customers that we want to work with who are people who would appreciate this kind of thinking versus just someone who would appreciate a pretty picture of a website that we made. That doesn't, dif that doesn't help us self-select our clients. So that was the yeah. idea behind that. Yeah, and I think this is something that's so important for people to master, to be able to have a thought that's different from the prevailing wisdom and to give themselves permission to go forth with it. So, you know, take us back to, to 1999 when you decided to make this alt text. Was that something, did you know that it was something different from the prevailing way to do it? And how did you arrive at that and give yourself permission to, to do that? Great question. Um, we knew it was different. We knew no one had ever done anything like that before. Um, and these were, actually, it's funny, they were almost like tweets they were um, or like short blog posts. They were just yeah. like these really short thoughts. And, um, um, you know, we weren't trying to be different. We just realized that we were. And then we're like, so one of our partners, originally one of my partners in the business was a guy named Carlos Segura, who's a graphic designer right. in Chicago. Yeah. And he has a line that says, communication that doesn't take a chance doesn't stand a chance. That's like his motto. And that drove us early on, which is like, let's take a shot. Like, what do we have to lose here? About, like, what, what we actually have to lose is not being ourselves. And that is a bigger loss than being yourself and not getting traction. Like, if we were trying to act like everyone else, then we weren't really being ourselves, and that's the loss. So let's take a shot at putting ourselves out there, doing this differently, and let's see who we attract this way. Let's see, you know, let's put in a different, everyone's fishing with this lure, let's put a different lure on and see what we attract, and maybe we attract some big fish that no one else knows how to attract, because everyone thinks the only way to attract this kind of fish is this way. Um, and it turned out that um, we, we landed a couple big projects, and we've been profitable as a company ever since then because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a, I mean, looking back, it's a bold move, but at the time we just didn't think it was bold. We're like, we have nothing. We don't even, like, we have nothing yet. We have no company yet. So we have nothing to lose. So let's take a shot. It's a lot easier now to be hesitant, in my opinion, to like be hesitant and be, being afraid to take a risk when you have something to lose. Like, we have something to lose. We've got a great business. We've got a lot of customers. We've got a reputation. Like we can lose that now, and then you get you get a little bit tight. So mm -hmm. we've tightened up as a company over the years. I think most companies do. Um, 
But when you're fresh and brand new, like that's the time to take a real shot. Why yeah. not? You know. I mean, it's it's funny to think about uh, that pro- thought process that you had because you know, if, I think how old were you then? You uh, twenty-five. You know, when I was maybe around twenty-five is when I started to wise up to okay, these thoughts that I have in my head that are different from the way other people are are doing things. Um, I should do something to pursue those. But yeah. you know, I think before that, I. Uh, allowed other people's I- ideas of what success was or what it what it meant to you know w- what I should be doing. I think I allowed those ideas to uh, I-, I know I did. I know I allowed those ideas to dictate my own actions um, and put me in situations that uh, that didn't make me happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, did you ever experience that sort of thing where you were maybe making decisions based on what somebody else? had decided oh was- absolutely yeah I mean when, before 37 signals um, I was just a freelancer doing website design on my own and I always referred to me as we I was always like when I was doing proposals I'm like we will provide a you know we will because I always felt like I had to act bigger I had yeah. to act like I was a company I mean it wasn't a company I was me it was just me and you know I just thought I had to be something else and I thought I remember at the time, you've been around for a while too, you might remember there's something called US Web, which was like kind of wrapping up. It was like the first, it was like wrapping up all these small web design firms, trying to make this like big web agency made oh, of. Oh, wow. Do you kind of, I don't know if maybe you remember this. I, I don't barely remember, remember that. It. What, what year would that have been? That was like <sighs> mid 90s, late 90s sort of thing. It was like, there's mid-90s, all these. Mid 90s, I was like, Making web pages on my AOL space. Yeah, but I mean, so was really, I. But it yeah. was like, anyway, it was it's this thing that didn't go anywhere, right? Yeah. But I'm like, I'm like, wow, someone might like my my firm, my firm might be acquired by a a conglomerate or like this weird, yeah. stupid shit I was thinking about at the time. I remember like, wanting to wanting to work for Razorfish. Yeah. And like seeing like, oh well, they they yeah. have MTV as a client, or totally. they're doing all these big things. And actually, my thing was. Communication Arts Magazine. Sure, was, as CA. a designer, absolutely, I would pour through the pages and yes. I'd write down every firm that was there, and I would go to the city and I would call them, try to get an interview. I did and, the same uh, thing. Same thing. Yeah, like, I'd go through these, oh, really? these design that's interesting. annuals. Yeah, I'd go through these design annuals, and I was like, "Man, I wish I could do that kind of work." And that's actually how I met Carlos. Exactly for the, the first way time. that I was. Yeah, I think most people are that way, and it's. I think it's good. I think it's like a good start, and then you come into your own at a certain point. And I think your mid twenties are actually. A really healthy moment for that. Yeah. Um, but before that, I was just like kind of wide-eyed and like excited, and you know, wanted to act bigger than I was, and wanted to be more professional. This is a thing like I wanted to be more professional. Yeah. That was the thing you have when you're when you're fresh out of school. You want to be a professional. Right. Which, like I need to write like really long proposals, and I need to like talk in a certain way. I need to act a certain way. I need to appear bigger and that's just insecurity and yeah. it's it's natural like you don't know what do you know you're 21 you're 20 whatever you don't know anything yet right so you're 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 trying to you're trying to act you're an actor and then at a certain point you become yourself and i think that's when it's formative is when you begin to realize like you know i don't and i realized this at some point i remember i realized it by accident i was doing these long proposals and um because I thought that's what you had to do. Like 20 page proposals. I remember like writing 20 page proposals about like. Oh, yeah, I've done a couple of right? those. Right? Right? Yeah. And you spend, I don't know, weeks and all nighters and like you write these proposals. You don't get the job. You don't get the job, right? <laughs> and then I realized like, first of all, I hate writing 20 page proposals. I think they're a waste of time because I, well, here's what happened to me. I was, um, I forget, my parents, I think, were doing like a kitchen renovation or something at home and they were getting these proposals from contractors. And I saw them look at them. And all they did was they turned to the, back, the last page, like, how much is it going to cost and how long is it going to take? <laughs> yeah. That's all you care about when you get a proposal because you, to get a proposal from somebody, you've already vetted them at a certain level. Like, I'm curious about what they would do for me. Yeah. I know who they are, so, like, what would they do? And you just want to know how much is it going to cost and how long is it going to take? So I realized this. I'm like, you know, I'm doing these 20-page proposals. I'm busting my ass on them. I don't like doing them. It's what you're supposed to do, right? Or is it? So I started doing shorter and shorter and shorter proposals and started winning jobs. Mm. And um, at the end of my freelance career, I was doing single-page proposals. Yeah. And I wasn't losing any business over them. And I realized, holy shit, I don't need to do what everyone else is doing. Like, I thought this is how you had to do it, but you don't have to do it that way. 
And that's like where I gave myself permission to go, well, what else don't have, I have to do that everybody else is doing? Okay, this is, all right, this is yeah. exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah, this is the time when you, you they slowly started making the proposals shorter and shorter, yep. and you realize that this thing that, that uh, other people had told you was so, or somehow you had come to the conclusion was, was true, was in fact not true. It was in fact not true. I don't even know if people fact, told was, me, or I just was, like thought you, I don't even know. Like, it was more than not true, it was false. Like, it was false at a variety of levels. It was false that like I had to do that to get jobs. Yeah. It was false that I had to stay up late and bust my ass to get work. And it was also false that it would make me happy. Like I was miserable making these long proposals. So I realized if I can eliminate the misery and I don't have to stay up late and I can like get, be concise and get to the point and present some, my work clearly in, in a page or two, like, man, that's a bunch of wins. Plus it's a win for the customer on the other side. Like, I know, and I told them that. Like, I'm like, look, I know how proposals are. Like, you're just gonna look at the at the. I said this in my proposal. I'm like, I know how proposals are. <laughs> like, you thumb through a bunch of stuff, and at the end of the day, you just look at the price and the and the and, the, and how long it's gonna take because you've already seen my work because that's why I'm. Sub, you've asked me to submit a proposal, so I don't need to like go through all my work again. Here's how much it's gonna cost. Here's how here's how long it's gonna take. And that was that was my pitch basically. Like. Look, let's cut through the bullshit because that's going to represent how I'm going to work with you. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm going to be direct and clear, and we're going to work concisely together. So it was, a, it was like an embodiment of how we're going to work also. And that resonated with people. And then I started to realize, like, man, I don't have to be like everybody else. Um, I, this opens up opportunities. Now, I didn't see all the other opportunities. It was just like a moment where, like, um, where I could, like, poke poke the way you're supposed to do it and, it and and get away with it. And they're like, ah, maybe I can do this more. And so I started doing sort of more a sense of like mischief that. to it. It kind of makes things more fun that way. Absolutely. I, I know I'm that way where, like, it, if I get stuck in a rut, I just kind of say, well, I'm going to just, like, write this silly, mischievous blog post or email, and suddenly it feels fresh and people respond more. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, this is something I'm actually thinking about here right now, which is, like, um, this com- like next year, there's some stuff I want to do that... Um, doesn't seem like it would be a reasonable thing to do. Like it wouldn't, it would be difficult to justify. Um, in the same way that I think a single page proposal would be difficult to justify until you realize that it works. And then it becomes, of course, you don't have to justify it anymore because it becomes true. And so like there's a couple things, I'm being very vague here because I don't want to talk about it quite yet because I haven't formed the ideas sure. th- thoroughly, but there's a couple things I want to do that seem um, counterintuitive to our own company. Um, that are in the way, our own way of working that I want to sort of uh, ruffle a bit. Yeah, so it sounds like you're trying to kind of 